What's up guys, this is Will from The Game Lounge and the Dreamcast sadly was Sega's last foray into the hardware business. The sheer hype machine behind the PlayStation 2 coupled with the fact that it supported DVDs meant that no matter what Sega did it just couldn't get any grounding. Despite that the Dreamcast really really delivered but the question today is quite simple. Was the PlayStation 2 actually Sega's finest console. Now it was the first to feature a compilation Mega Drive disc that actually emulated pretty well unlike say the Sega Smash Pack on the Dreamcast. And not only that but it featured some incredible games from Sega's past, many Dreamcast ports and many many fantastic new games post the Dreamcast era. Today we're going to be looking at the Sega Saturn which actually was extremely well represented in on the PlayStation 2, at least if you're in Japan. Let's take a look. So kicking off, we have perhaps the most iconic game on Sega's 32-bit hardware, and that is Sega Rally. Now this was actually a add-on disc if you purchased Sega Rally 2006, and this is a direct port of the Model 2 game. That means it's pretty bare bones, whereas the Saturn version had time attack modes and the additional car, the Stratos. This is just straight two cars, championship mode and practice. Um, however, it is a port of the Model 2 game, so it runs at a smooth 60 frames per second, which you really notice when you're playing it. Um, staggeringly, this is the last time that this game, despite its position in history, was ported to uh, any console. So there was no Xbox Live version or anything like that. If we take a look at the comparison though, whilst this version definitely is pretty close to the Model 2 original and controls great, the one thing and the theme I think that you'll see with many of these ports going forward is just what a fantastic job Sega did with the Sega Saturn version. If we run these side by side, you can see obviously the PlayStation version, PS2 version is significantly better but I think the concessions that were made to port this to the Saturn, really, really, it was a labor of love and an excellent game and I think deserves all of the credit that it has. But yeah, the fact that the PlayStation 2 has the most iconic Saturn game, I think means that this is definitely one to represent the PlayStation as the ultimate Sega console. Next up, we're taking a look at Virtua Fighter 2, which also received a port as part of the Sega Ages collection. Again, sadly, another Japan only release. But this was again very, very close to the Model 2 arcade board. Uh, now, this actually has pros and cons, in my opinion. If we look at the Saturn version here, which I think you can see is really, really, again, very, very carefully ported to the Saturn. The 2D backgrounds actually look absolutely spectacular. And if we go back and look at the PS2 uh, screens, one thing that you'll notice is it was sort of a, a gray dark shadow over everything, which I found personally really, really off-putting and didn't like. I actually think the Saturn's brightness captures that Model 2 version much, much better. The other thing that I think makes the Saturn version actually better in this case is the fact that the Saturn version had different modes. It was built for home consoles. So when you play the PS2 version, you essentially get the arcade version that was trying to guzzle quarters. And ultimately, even in the second or third round, I think when you play Pi, it gets pretty hard pretty quick. Whereas obviously, if you look at the Saturn version, it will be more in line, easy, normal, hard. These modes work. Now, of course, there are things missing from the Saturn version. The bridge, as you can see here, because of the 2D backgrounds, couldn't be implemented. But personally, I think the Saturn version has the edge here in terms of overall game and package. Uh, but still, great to have, you know, one of the biggest, biggest fighters, 3D fighters of the 90s represented on the PS2. Another Sega Ages Japan only sadly game uh, was Dynamite Decker and what they did here they actually completely remade this game originally an STV game ported to the Saturn and known as Diet Hard Arcade in the West 
Dynamite Decker was re-released and actually featured two modes, a Saturn mode and I think the really, really excellent looking remake. Considering these were not big budget titles, I think there's some really, really great effects and they really, really nicely update these visuals. The gameplay is all intact. If we look here, you can see the lighting effects and everything coming through and the, the detail versus the Saturn version. Uh, and the fact that the Saturn version is also included on the disc if you want to play the traditional version. This is a really, really great way, I think, to play this game. Again, this is a game that was not ported to any other systems post this. Um, certainly this version was never ported. So a really, really, really good Saturn game that you could play on the PS2 that actually still holds up today gameplay wise. So, so far, the games that have been bought to the PlayStation 2 from the Saturn have all been very, very good representations and excellent games. Outrun, on the other hand, which is actually the first of the games that we're going to feature that was released in the West, just really, really missed the mark in every single way. They decided to make it 3D. Uh, if we have a look at the magic that was the original version when you see it here, the Saturn re-release actually had a higher refresh rate and was better than Arcade Perfect. Have a look at this versus the bizarre PS2 version and everything about this just felt off. Whether it was the bland, lifeless graphics and I say this, at a t this came out at a time when outrun 2 was out they could have simply reused that engine which was ultimately ported to the ps2 and yet it completely misses the mark the car design which is this strange curved you know non-angular non-representative and whether that was for licensing reasons i have no idea it all just was incredibly strange but the worst thing for me was that the controls were just off they didn't feel right compared with the excellent saturn version so sadly this one is a miss uh, like i say it it bizarrely also got a release in the west as part of the sega classics collection but this one is a big miss for me i wouldn't bother i would stick with the fantastic saturn version but anyway let's get back to the positives now the original virtua fighter which was ported to the saturn from model one hardware it wasn't the best port but 10 years later with the release of virtua fighter 4 uh, sega also chose to port virtua fighter 1 uh, and whilst it looked like the original virtua fighter it actually played uh, a hybrid between the Virtua Fighter 4 fighting engine, but still with things like the floaty jump mechanic that was in Virtua Fighter. And the result, quite frankly, is spectacular. This was a awesome game. Sadly, only a limited release did come out in the West as well, the 10 year anniversary collection of Virtua Fighter. Uh, but this really, really is so much fun, even to play now. I recommend if anybody can get their hands on this version, this is definitely the way to play the original Virtua Fighter, updated and really, really tastefully uh, upgraded to look and retain the feel of the original. But with Virtua Fighter 4, arguably one of the greatest fighting games of all time, those mechanics overlaid it's a great game and the ps2 had an absolutely excellent fighting game in this one next up we have another saturn classic which is nights into dreams uh sadly another one that only released in japan unfortunately but this is as good a remake this set the bar long before the crash and the spyro remakes in terms of remaking a 32-bit game the models looked better the water effects look better but it retained the classic knight's feel of the saturn original they really really did a fantastic job um, there was also a saturn mode if you appreciated the saturn's original visuals now that wasn't strictly a version of the saturn it was more a sort of hybrid ps2 version with a much much lower resolution and some of the transparency effects but overall it um, really is a great way to play this game this was actually the foundation for the 360 and ps3 versions and pc versions of course that you can still play now if you see the saturn version it's you know i think the saturn version now looks 
brilliant. It, it really retains this incredible art style that despite the fact of it being early 3D, it still holds up today in terms of its visual design. Looks absolutely great. But the PS2 version, I think, was absolutely excellent. So this is another classic Sega Saturn game that appeared on Sony's console. Next up, we have Sonic R, which was released as part of the Sonic Gems collection. This was a collection of games essentially that didn't feature on the Sonic Mega collection and contained games like Sonic CD. Now, this port was actually based on the 2004 PC version, and I think this loses some of the magic of the Sega Saturn version. You can see here the draw distance was significantly larger, and if you look at this sequence here, it just seems to lose quite literally the magic and smoke and mirrors of the Saturn version. I think the Saturn's versions you know lower resolution lighter draw distance better lighting effects it really created this incredible 3d world like you can see here and i think that that almost gets lost and because you take that away with the higher draw distance and cleaner visuals it actually shows the weaknesses of this game now it wasn't the best game by itself anyway so this actually was a really disappointing port also an aside, I really loved the loading screen on the Saturn version, and sadly that's completely gone from this version. Still, I mean, it's still the same game. It still has the DNA of Sonic R, but to me, the original Saturn version was just magical, and I think that that is lost somewhat in translation here. Sonic R, though, it's still a great version to play if you just haven't played this game before and you know you can't pick up the Saturn original. This is a way that you'll at least get an appreciation of what the game was like. Virtual Racing Flat Out on the PS2 was until very recently the best way to play this game it featured four new cars three new tracks versus the arcade original the graphics were really really faithful to the arcade in fact they looked better there was more geometry more polygons on screen it ran silky smooth this one came out again along with outrun as part of the sega classics collection in north america and europe and really really did it justice i think this was a big disappointment on the Saturn. I think a lot of people expected better. I didn't hate the Saturn version, but it definitely lost some of the DNA when you compared it to the Model 1 original. This version on the PS2 definitely retains that and adds so much more content and is really a fantastic representation of this game. So Sega fans that pick this one up, if you're in Europe, the classics collection this game was worth picking up the whole collection just for this game so virtual racing is a great game on the ps2 virtual on was a another fantastic model 2 conversion to the ps2 but with a number of additional features initially it featured widescreen support there are a number of extra modes there was an assault mode where effectively you only could use hand-to-hand -hand combat there was even a virtual fighter kids-esque mode that made the models look a little bit crazy but this is a game that originally looked great on the system it used that infinite planes mode 7-esque mode really really well to convert this to the saturn but the ps2 version is just a class above it looks stunning a perfect replica of the model 2 original on top of that the playstation 2 obviously features dual analog sticks so there's no need for the expensive twin stick setup which was amazing on the saturn but obviously very costly this works straight out of the box so a great conversion virtual on highly recommended and another feather in the cap of the ps2 as a great sega saturn replacement next up we have my personal 
biggest disappointment, and that is the Decathlete Collection, which was three games. It was Athlete Kings or Decathlete if you were in the States. It was Winter Heat and it was Virtua Athlete for the Dreamcast. Now, there's a few a few positives you can see here. Rather than two athletes, you had effectively all eight running the 100 meters. But the first problem is look at these character models and who is Rick Braid? I mean, it was Rick Blade. You look at the character models here. They were animated. They were big. They were colorful. It ran at a gorgeous 60 hertz on the Saturn and the controls just felt absolutely great. The other key thing was the animations were so good. To me, on the Saturn, this was the best track and field game and it was better than anything that had come out before it. It really was the best that you could get. And very, very sadly, I think that there was a hugely missed opportunity here. I think, you know, if you look at the long jump in particular, and you look at the way that these characters move versus the fluidity of the Saturn movement, you'll just see why this game just generally feels off. And I think this is a huge miss i think if they'd have just converted the saturn versions then these would have been excellent um i would personally give this one a miss decathlete stick to the saturn original The original Panzer Dragoon was one of the Saturn's premier titles. It was a game that arguably would have been very difficult to do on the PlayStation due to its architecture. Now, this version, when it was released, was criticised at the time. There's a Saturn version, which is a bare-bones conversion of the Saturn. Uh, and then also there's a updated modern version. And that feels a little bit half done, you know, when you consider that Panzer Andrew Dagoon Auto was out on the Xbox. It, I feel they could have done a little bit more with this. That being said, it's about recreating the Saturn's feel and this does it excellently. Uh, and the modern version, I think you just have to see that as a bonus. So Pandra Dagoon is a great game. This is one of the best ways to play it. Of course, it was unlockable on the Xbox game, but this still remains one of the best ways to play the original. I also highly recommend you check out the uh, Xbox and Switch version, the re recent remake. It doesn't quite have the magic of the original, but it's still a great way to play. Fighting Vipers was another Model 2 game, and I was really excited to get this one on the PlayStation 2, mainly because I don't think the Saturn did the visuals justice. They used a lower res mode, unlike Virtua Fighter 2, mainly because there are a lot more 3D polygons, destructible environments, etc. And I don't think the Saturn version looked particularly good. It also used 2D um, textures for the backgrounds rather than 3D models. And again, I think it really made the version suffer. The gameplay on the Saturn was great, but the PS2 version is an absolutely faithful recreation of the original Model 2 game, and it looks absolutely stunning. Now, again, there is one negative, which is that none of the extras from the Saturn game were ported across. This is just the raw arcade game, but still, to me, until this was released on the 360, this was the definitive way to play Fighting Vipers. So next up, we have one of my favorite series of games, Virtua Cop. Now this was the Elite Edition, for some reason did release in Europe, but not in North America, and amazingly can be picked up fairly cheaply nowadays. Now, it was criticized at launch for not having enough content. You can see the visuals here, it was completely remade from the ground up. It contained both Virtua Cop 1 and Virtua Cop 2. So if you were a Sega fan, this was fantastic but the criticism was there weren't that many additional modes there was no extra content if we look at the saturn version side by side i would have personally loved to see the saturn version bundled in with this as well there's a fairly big difference in the visuals and they are quite polarizing personally i love the updated look i think it looks really really good and all of the gameplay stays 
perfectly intact. But I also can see how the sort of crunchy, bright Model 2 original visuals would also be more appealing for many. I think if you look at the Saturn version here, you can see the fantastic job that they did. It's one of the best looking Saturn games, bringing the entire game across intact it looks fantastic uh, i think if you're a sega fan this definitely should be part of any sega fans collection virtual cop is a fantastic game and to have the second one in there as well which just up the ante in every single way is extremely good so this was another great saturn game to get the ps2 treatment and the final first party Sega Saturn game that came onto the PlayStation 2 that we're going to take a look at is Last Bronx. And was I happy that this one made it? This is still, to this day, the definitive version of this game. I think you have to remember this pushed the Model 2 arcade platform to the limits and they did a fantastic version for the Sega Saturn downgrading it. But when you see the PS2 version, which is a completely faithful recreation of the Model 2 version, as well as a lot of additional content in there, additional modes, etc., large weapon modes, an unlimited mode for practice, etc., it just really, really is fantastic that this got a home release. Uh, and although, let's have a look at the Saturn version, you can see like I say, a phenomenal job. But this game, and particularly a lot of the effects, if you play it on a modern TV on the Saturn, it uses interlacing, so it doesn't look great when hooked into an LCD monitor. The PS2 version, on the other hand, looks phenomenal. So this is one of my favorite games in the Sega Ages collection. Again, very sadly, only released in Japan and very sadly will cost a lot if you want to pick this one up through eBay or secondary market sources. But I highly recommend if you're a fan of classic Sega fighters that you do try and find a way to get this game. So was the Sony PlayStation 2 the ultimate Sega console? Well, certainly when you look at the Saturn, I think it's incredibly well represented on this system. And that's not just Sega first party games. Let's not forget the PS2 was also backward compatible with PS1. So some amazing games that you may have played had PlayStation versions, multi-plats like Tomb Raider, like Symphony of the Night, like Croc, Rayman, Wipeout. There are just so many great games that were multi-platform. And let's face it, the 3D on the PlayStation was slightly better. So these are almost slightly enhanced versions of classic Saturn games that you know. So that's part one. I think, yes, this system is definitely the best representation of the Saturn that we've had since the Saturn. Yes, the 360 had some great games like Guardian Heroes and uh, Radiant Silver Gun, but I think overall, this is the better system. Join me for part two next time. Thanks for watching. If you got to this phase, don't forget to like and subscribe. And have a great day.